Hey everyone, Dr. Lee here from Your Vet Online, and tonight I'm going to be talking all about foal illnesses. And I decided to do that because for those of you that are in the southern hemisphere, it is now spring and we have a lot of foals that are being born. And I want you to all get the best out of your foals because generally speaking, we've put a lot of effort into breeding them. It's taken a lot of time to get them to be born and so we don't want them to die or have any problems that um, could be prevented. So often foals are prevented to veterinarians when it's a little late. Now I'm not necessarily saying like when it's they're really, really sick and we can't treat them. Yes, we get a few of those. However, sometimes we do think that we do get them just that little bit later and it means that for us to treat them we're going to have to do a lot more and spend a lot more money and sometimes it's it actually results in animals having permanent disabilities so if you've spent a lot of money on semen vet you know care to actually get your foal in the first place you definitely want to be making sure that you understand what the best all the signs are that you need to look for so that um, you don't have these problems. Now, if you have any questions at all, just pop them down below um, and I'll get through them as we keep going. Hi, Geraldine, how are you? And who else have we got? Almira, hello. Um, yeah, so if you've got any questions, pop them down below um, and then I'll get to those as we go through. Uh, or at the end if I get carried away and talk too much like sometimes I do. All right then guys, so pretty much the first thing that we all like to do is do the veterinary foal check. Now this occurs within the sort of about basically the first 24 hours after your foal is born and you get the vet to come out and pretty much they do the whole shebang. They test um, everything there is about your foal. I'll go into each of those things separately shortly. And they basically make sure that your foal is doing everything it should be at that time. And also, of course, your vet gets to meet your foal, which is pretty cool because we, we, like, we like dealing with foals. I don't know too many vets that don't like and enjoy having a bit of a, a little foal cuddle. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we always do is we do the clinical and sort of physical exam. And we basically do that, we're checking their demeanor, we're making sure that they're bright and happy um, and they're doing well in that sense. They're not sad, they're not um, neurological. We'll talk a little bit later about some of the syndromes that we can get that uh, can worry us and that we'll need ex and you need to be alert about, but we'll check on that um, later. We check the heart, we make sure there's no um, whooshing noises that might mean that there's a nice big murmur there or that there's an um, a rhythm problem and we make sure that the heart rate is within a certain area and actually I want to um, alert you I've actually put a link in the um, description above and that actually tell is a link to a form that you can download and you can stick it to your phone or you can in your phone somewhere or you can well, maybe print it off and then stick it to the stable door or the feed room door or wherever and then you can refer to that when you have a new foal that's born just so that you can do this physical exam yourself as well and it's not just as soon as they're born a little bit later too like I recommend we keep a really close eye on our foals up until about three four weeks of age and then they're a little bit stronger but in that first four weeks lots of things can potentially go wrong so back to the physical exam, right, what we'd be looking at is making sure that they're um, nursing really well, they, they can actually form a good suction around the teat, we get the occasional foal that struggles with that. We also make sure that there's not any congenital type 
um, abnormalities or signs of infection. Now, some of these turn up at the later date, um, but we, we make sure that we're not seeing any of those problems immediately. The other thing we do is we always perform a blood test. Well, not always, I shouldn't say. I would like everyone to always perform a blood test. Now, this is a test for IgG antibodies. And it's vitally important because, well, if you're going to insure your horse, your foal, you definitely need it. So that's a no-brainer. But if it's even if you're not going to insure them, basically it's a it's a, a blood test that measures the amount of IgG, which is a type of antibody, in the blood of the foal. So when a, a foal drinks the colostrum from the mare, the IgG antibodies trans, are transferred in that milk, and you also get a little bit through the blood system, everything like that from the from the dam. And then basically we're checking to make sure that that foal has had, got enough antibodies in its system to hopefully withstand any onslaught of bacterial infection or anything that might come in, come their way as far as infections, that sort of thing. So it's really, really, really important that these foals get adequate immunity. Now, there are some other systems you can use to try and check that. You can, you can measure the colostrum weight um, with special refractometers. Yeah, that's, that's okay, but the, the, pretty much the best thing that you can do is to actually measure those levels straight away in those blood tests. We, we basically definitely recommend a blood test for this because if your foal has got uh, low levels of IgG, um, we, we measure them, anything over 800, we pretty much say, yay, good to go, you know, we're happy. Once it gets down low, especially lower than 400, we're doing things like supplementing colostrum. We may also do plasma transfusions because we definitely want those foals to get more antibodies there. The next thing we would do is we check that the meconium has passed. Now, if you don't know what meconium is, it's that very first feces that your horse will have, your foal will have. It's often very dark brown, um, and it's firm, it's like little balls. And all of that, that's the feces that the, that, that foal had while they're in utero. And once we get rid of, we need to get rid of all of that. And we want that to be all gone pretty much within 24 hours. And if it's not, if the foal is struggling to do that, because sometimes it is really, really hard, like it's, you know, firm, firm feces, then we definitely need to treat them because they can be really, really, really painful. So we, you'll find that your vet will examine your foal up its bottom and we'll make sure that it can definitely pass those um, that meconium and if it can't then we'll be looking at doing things like an enema to try and remove that feces. All right the next thing we always want to do is we always want to check the umbilicus. I want you guys to do that too. Um, it's really important that we check these frequently until they dry up. Um, basically we don't want them to be you know too moist we don't, we want them to be dry. Well, when they're first born, of course, they're going to be moist, but we want them to dry up very quickly. And we also don't want any urine coming out of them. We don't want them to be continue bleeding. We don't want them to be swollen or there be any enlargement. So definitely that's something we'll be looking at. And often the vet will actually put iodine on these to help stop any infections going up through the navel, which is absolutely a, a cause of potential infection. And while we're doing that, we also check for appropriate and normal urination. Now, urination should always come either out of the penis or out of the vulva. Occasionally, you'll get it out of the umbilicus, and that is not appropriate. So when the foal is actually forming in utero, the embryology stage, it's all connected. It's a fault with embryology. So if we see a foal that is 
urinating through its umbilical cord, you definitely need to get in touch with your veterinarian because we need to fix that problem. And there's a, and there's a whole lot of ways we can do that. We won't go into that here. Not all of them are particularly invasive or anything. So always good to um, keep a very close eye on that. Okay, the next thing we like to do is we always check over the ribs and overall sort of confirmation. So we want to make sure there's no fractured ribs um, that have been sustained during the birth process. <laughs> Remember that these mares are pretty strong and they can fracture a rib by actually pushing the foal out. So on occasion you'll see that. You can check that yourself by running your hands along each side you know, of the ribs I like to follow every single rib individually. Um, so get the rib and basically take it down right round underneath from the top right round and check each one individually because you'll be surprised at how easy it is actually to miss a fractured rib. Now the majority of ribs are fine um, even if they are fractured and we don't need to do anything too invasive, we just have to keep an eye on things. However the occasional foal will have an issue, they might have a pneumothorax, you know, where they have trouble breathing. So we really need to make sure we look at those things quickly and address them as soon as we notice them. Now the other thing that I mentioned there is confirmation. And this is particularly related to their legs. So if they are have ex, you know, really um, contracted tendons or the other way and they're really lax, then we'll have to treat those immediately. Now, if they're contracted tendons, we can do a lot of things to get those straightened, but you need to do that very early on. Like within, you need to start the process within that 24 hours and then Again, with laxity, if they're right down on their haunches and they're hitting the ground with their fetlocks, then we need to protect that area and we can help them with support bandages and casts and that sort of thing to help them at that time. Let's have a quick question here. Is there anything we can give the mare to help with milk production? My mare has three goals. Has, oh, has had three, and I um, foals obviously, and is always really slow to get lots of milk through the first couple of weeks. Yeah, there actually is, Geraldine. You can talk to your vet about that. Dom Peridone is the name, and I've just forgotten the trade name for it. However, yeah, your um, we can help you with that if your vet's not used to using it. We I've used it quite a few times, and me as my, myself. Generally speaking, what it does is it it basically helps milk production. So you you give it, and there's a special program that we put the um, mares on. It's a bit of a pain because there's a lot of tablets you've got to crush up. But yeah, it, it works really well. So Geraldine, if you want to contact us and we can help you with that or talk to your reg regular vet about that. Righty ho. The next thing I was going to talk to you about was neonatal encephalopathy. That's a nice big word for you. Now, this, you might recognize this, this name as like foal maladjustment syndrome, or you might recognize it as, you know, dummy foals. And a lot of people, that's what they call it. And basically, there's been a thought that for somehow, basically, these foals have something wrong with their brain and their central nervous system. And they, act really weird they're just like then that's why they got the term dummy foals because yeah they they kind of it it basically happens between birth to about sort of 36 hours on it can be really mild and really subtle it could be just like a latching on problem or it can be quite full on and the foal can have seizures and actually be quite affected by it so yeah it's it's an interesting thing because sometimes you get these foals and they within the first 24 hours they're actually quite normal and then they so slowly regress and now we see things like they might curl their tongue they often lose their suckle reflex often they're disorientated they might 
They might wander around. You often see them wandering around and they, you know, they're hungry, but they don't know where to go. They have trouble sort of finding the teat. They can be hyper responsive to stimulus. So um, you touch them and they jump and very hyper responsive, a lot of them. And they can be, as I said before, they can have the seizures, they can have funny breathing patterns. The biggest problem with this is that the vast majority actually do okay. And it's just a time factor. So depending on how bad they are, it might be that you need to send your mare and foal into a veterinary clinic to get intensive care. And saying that, like they often do recover, as I say, you know, 80 to 90% actually do very well. The issue is, is that some, while they're in that terrible spot where they might be seizuring or they might be having other issues, they're usually down. That means they're at risk of infection from high, you know, hygiene, even though we try our hardest. They can swallow things down the wrong, you know, like they don't swallow properly. So milk goes down into their lungs and they might get a pneumonia. And often these foals didn't really get the colostrum they needed right at the beginning. And so often they have some sort of immune deficiency. So they are very prone to sepsis. So unless if they don't get that and they don't have the secondary sort of problems, then, yeah, they recover very well. And the other thing that I want you all to be really aware of is neonatal sepsis, because this is probably the big one, and it's the most common cause of illness and death in foals. We were talking before about how foals can actually get infections. They can ingest something, so it can come via the GI tract. They can breathe it in, so whether that's so particles on the air, or it's secondary to something like milk going down the wrong way, because that, that can happen too. Often, uh, we often find sometimes if the mare has had an infection prior to birth, so perhaps she's got had placentitis, um, infection of the placenta, or something like that, then they can pick up the infection that way, so they're actually born sick. Um, they might not be showing signs of sick at, straight away, but they they will do. They develop it. And as I said before, the umbilicus is a root of infection. So because remember, it's an open um, gateway to, to the horse. So you've got, you know, those vessels can get, bugs can get into those and then shimmy their way up and, yeah, into the, the liver and all through the bloodstream. So we often see signs of this, and this is what I want you guys to think about. And if we've got people watching, make sure you download the checklist, the fold checklist, because I go into depth about what is normal and what is abnormal. So you can recognize and determine if your foal might be acting a little bit bizarre. And then you can get onto it very quickly, because as I said, sepsis is the big one. And a lot of we have a lot of problems with foals getting this. Now, it usually rears its head visually and really, really noticeably by about seven to 10 days old. However, we can see subtle signs way before this. You know, some of those signs, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later because I want you guys to know exactly what sort of things you need to look out for with your foals. But basically, you're looking for things like loss of suck. If they're a little bit, you know, just a little bit off. They don't really care about mum that much. You know, that can be a very early sign. And always check your mare. Sometimes it's really disconcerting and you don't realise that your foal has actually got a problem because the foal's always up against the mare and always looking like it's suckling. But it's actually not doing anything. It's not, it hasn't got its lips around the nipple and it's just, yeah, it's just not doing anything. So very important to actually check the mare's udder. That is so, I can't stress that enough. If your mare is dripping milk or she has a very firm udder, definitely you want to be looking at your foal a lot more closely and 
download that checklist and then you can go through and you can do all the tests that we've written down there and make sure they're all good. But some of the other signs that you might see with you know, a bowl that's got sepsis are things like, you know, they're weak. They may have a change in the colour of their mucous membrane, so their, their sclera of their eye, around their teeth, you know, their gums. Sometimes you'll see what we call petechial hemorrhage, which is basically little pinpoints of redness, little red spots all through the gums and around the um, in the in the eyes. Often these foals also have a very rapid heart rate, so you need to know what normal is because you can't tell what abnormal is until you know what normal is. So download that that checklist. And again, you often find with some of these guys, especially if they've, they've got to the stage where they're either got an increased um, body temperature or they've got issues with their lungs, then their respiratory rate will also um, increase. And don't forget to check your joints, the foal's joints, because that's often one sign that we see, you know, maybe your foal's just lying down a little bit more than usual, doesn't really having, it's not really having the run around that it used to have, because foals love to run around. You know, they're naughty. They, they're the life of the party. So if they stop doing anything like that and they're a little bit they're just hanging back, especially if they're in a group, like often I find this if we've got a group of foals, you, if one's just sort of not quite in the group, then you kind of think, oh, oh this, is, this is not good. So, yeah, definitely sepsis is one of those things that you've got to have really high on your thought list because if you don't get onto something like that and you don't recognise the signs, which I'll talk about shortly, then definitely going to have, you're going to have issues. Now, remember, if we're talking about sepsis and things like that, we can actually, you know, prevent this. So... We can, we can do everything we can by vaccinating properly, and that's vaccinating our mare prior to birth and also giving our newborn foal um, some vac a vaccine at birth. We can also make sure that we have a really clean environment for the mare to give birth in. So sometimes these mare paddocks can end up being like a bug bath because all these mares have given birth in there and it's filthy. So if you can rotate paddocks or if you're if you if the mare falls inside then that's you know you'll be cleaning it anyway but sometimes it's a good idea to actually rotate your paddocks making sure you've got a nice clean umbilicus when the foal's born you want to iodine treat that and the other thing to always remember is with the colostrum, like I talked about before. So you've got to check that colostrum level, whether you're checking it via bloods or whether you're checking it via testing the actual colostrum that you gave the um, that the mare. You might have stripped out a little bit just as you, you know, when she's been when when she had the foal. So those are things you need to watch out for. The things that we need to check and be aware of. So go and download that checklist. But basically, you want to know and you want to be really alert for things like reduced suckling, any signs of colic, if they're a little bit painful, like if they're hunching up when they're trying to go to the toilet, whether it's urination or whether it's defecation. Often, if they're a bit painful with colic, they do what I call the prayer position, where they stretch back with their front legs straight and sort of lean down onto their haunches. Um, that's a good indicator of pain. Sometimes they've got diarrhea, and diarrhea can happen really quickly and can be very devastating. So if you've got diarrhea in a foal, please get a vet to, to definitely or have a chat with your vet. There are things that can cause diarrhea, such as foal heat. Yeah, if you've got a young, young foal and it gets diarrhea, definitely you want to be, you want to be onto that straight away. The other thing, of course, as I keep saying, the wet or the leaking umbilicus cord. 
You also want to check to make sure any of those joints, so knees, hocks, stifle, even um, the coronary band, check that area. All of those areas and the umbilicus, of course, for swelling, enlargement, heat and pain because definitely they can be surefire signs of sepsis. And again, the whole urination thing. Sometimes with foals, you'll see that they're a bit unhappy and things aren't quite right and as I said before you might see the change in how they're nursing but you might see things like tail swishing. Often I notice that some foals are really you know they're not happy and you know it might be a bit of pain like especially if there's a happy tail swish when they're feeding but there's also that when they might grind their teeth a little and they swish that tail and they've eaten and they just got that look like I'm not happy and they actually kind of look kind of angry and often that is tummy problems so you definitely want to be be aware of that because that can yeah that can be definitely something to watch out for all right then guys that was pretty much all I was going to go through tonight I just wanted to let you know yeah, basically those key things that you need to watch out for. So make sure you download that checklist because then you can put it on your fridge, you can put it on the stable door, the feed room door, you can download it to your phone, have it kept in a safe place in your phone, and then you know what to look up, out for. All right then, guys. I'm Dr. Lee from Your Vet Online. We do this every Tuesday. I do a little talk on a topic that I thought think that you guys might enjoy every Tuesday, the first Tuesday in the first of the month. Um, we actually do a ask any question you like um, talk. So you can tune in then. All right. You guys have a great night. Enjoy yourselves. We'll talk to you later. Bye.